Hello world, new Bluetooth exploits have been discovered which enable impersonation and mad in the middle attacks. There's a new Apple M1 vulnerability and it's impossible to fix. And WhatsApp sues India for mandating mass surveillance. That's in today's episode of The Week Web where we break down and dissect cybersecurity related tech news. The first major Bluetooth security flaws which effectively break Bluetooth's connection mechanism have been uncovered. A French national security agency has published a very detailed paper in which they discuss seven new vulnerabilities in Bluetooth's pairing process. The findings are being called BIAS, standing for Bluetooth impersonation attacks. Catchy. These new vulnerabilities affect the Bluetooth specification itself as opposed to implementation problems. Because they exploit Bluetooth on an architectural level, these new exploits affect pretty much every Bluetooth device. The vulnerabilities themselves allow for impersonation attacks as well as man in the middle snooping. In one instance, an attacker could listen in on two devices connecting to each other. Then, using a specially crafted series of responses, it could determine each bit of the randomly generated Bluetooth passkey. Once identified, the attacker could use these passkey bits during the same pairing session to pair with one of the devices it was listening in on. In English, an attacker could figure out the key, impersonate a device, and perform an unauthorized connection. These new attacks are particularly stealthy because the Bluetooth standard does not require notifying end users about the outcome of an authentication procedure or lack thereof, meaning these new hacks can be performed silently. This affects both Bluetooth core and mesh specifications. Core relates to the basic Bluetooth we've been using for years, but the mesh specification is used in IoT devices, which allows for many Bluetooth devices to connect to each other. The researchers tested 31 devices, including phones, laptops, tablets, all of them were vulnerable to these hacks. However, in reality, it's unlikely you would fall victim to one of them. An attacker would of course need to be within range of a device in order to exploit it, so don't panic. That being said, Android has assessed this issue as high severity for Android OS and will be issuing a patch for this vulnerability in an upcoming Android update. You can expect the larger manufacturers to come out with fixes soon, however there will be a good number of devices which will probably never see an update, some older phones perhaps, and those pesky IoT devices of course. There are seven vulnerabilities in total here, they're all explained in detail within the research paper, which I'll link below if you want to be confused. This video is sponsored by a super cool new YouTube channel, Samsub. They're all about helping you defend yourself in what they call the online jungle. Their focus is on protecting your identity, personal data, and wallet from the many scammers, fraudsters, and hackers that lurk online. In one video, they go in depth on online verification services, showing you how they work and how they can be fooled. To do this, they took the role of an online fraudster, creating a fake identity along with a fake passport and trying to get verified with a number of these services. The Samsub channel is is made up of real life digital security professionals fighting against money laundering, terrorist financing, and online fraud. These guys build powerful identity verification solutions, including liveness technology and forgery detection tools, and in their spare time provide you with some serious insider knowledge that you certainly won't find elsewhere. In a recent video, they explore how Breaking Bad's Walter White could have laundered the money made from his meth business via Bitcoin instead of a car wash. They cover in detail how OTC brokers, sham contracts, and Bitcoin mixers are used by criminals to launder their Bitcoin. Make sure to subscribe to the Sumsub YouTube channel. They release new content every week and they're linked in the description. A vulnerability in Apple's new M1 processors has just been discovered and it's impossible to fix. The flaw also exists in Apple's A14 chips because they're very similar to the M1 processors. The vulnerability allows two applications to covertly exchange data between themselves without using any OS level features like files or sockets. This is known as a covert channel vulnerability. It works by utilizing read-write access to an ARM system register by writing to it with one application and simply reading from it with another. The proof of concept uses little more than a dozen lines of code, so it's fairly simple. Hector, the guy who figured all of this out, explained that this vulnerability was introduced because Apple decided to break the ARM spec by removing a mandatory feature, because they figured they never needed to use that feature in Mac OS. And then it turned out that removing that feature made it much harder for existing OSs to mitigate this vulnerability. He's calling this find Miracles or M1 Miracles, get it? M1 miracles, M1 ir Any Anyway, point being, because this flaw is baked into the M1 and A14 chips themselves, it can't simply be fixed with an OS update, but rather the chip itself would have to be redesigned. Given Apple will likely already have their M2 chip well on the way, we might not see a fix for this until M3. So should you be worried? Should you burn your M1 Mac, crush your A14 iPhone? No. 
Whilst yes, this is a vulnerability, it's not necessarily a very valuable one. This exploit only allows two nefarious applications already installed on your computer to communicate covertly. Even if you had a couple of malicious programs installed, this exploit really isn't that useful on macOS. As Hector explains, there are already different methods of doing this on every system. And even then, what would the reason for the covert communication be? Advertisers could abuse this for cross-app tracking, but the practical uses are limited. There is a but. It's a different story on iOS, which inherently has stricter privacy protections. For example, keyboard apps are not allowed to access the internet for privacy reasons. A malicious keyboard app could use this vulnerability to send text that the user types to another malicious app, which could then send it to the internet. Though given Apple screens apps before allowing them into the App Store, it wouldn't take much for them to block access to these registers. So we're probably okay. WhatsApp is suing the Indian government over a new law which would effectively force them to implement mass surveillance. This law is pretty spooky from a privacy perspective. It all centers around traceability. The government wants the ability to trace the origins of any given message. In a blog post, WhatsApp explains just how awful an idea this is. This isn't just a case of a government wanting to be able to identify a particular user, it's a whole lot worse. WhatsApp explains, traceability is at odds with how law enforcement usually investigates crimes. In a typical law Law enforcement request, a government requests technology companies provide account information about a known individual's account. But with traceability, a government would provide a technology company with a piece of content and ask who sent it first. They have this tree diagram to illustrate the problem. One person could send something, some text, an image, anything, then a million people could share that same message. However, it's the original sender which would have their details sent to authorities if the message turned out to be problematic, even if they didn't mean any harm in sharing it. The result of a particular piece of information being shared to an unlimited amount of people could be blamed on the original sender. Not only is this a very bad idea conceptually, but the law would mean WhatsApp would have to create a database of every single message sent via their service and provide access upon request from law enforcement. WhatsApp has 530 million users in India. It's their largest market. They're suing the Indian government on the basis that the law violates Indians' constitutional rights to privacy, and they're not alone. Mozilla, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, among others, have all made statements in support of WhatsApp's efforts. There's a lot of moving parts in this issue. It seems to be a larger part of the Indian government's feud with social media. Throughout the pandemic, the Indian government has forced Facebook and Twitter to take down hundreds of posts critical of the government's handling of coronavirus. This new law applies to companies with over 5 million users, but neither Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter have appointed officers to deal with these new government's requests as required by law. So they're stuck in a kind of limbo as the deadline for compliance was a few days ago. We can't really say what will happen from here, apart from wait and see, I suppose. Though I can't help but sense a bit of irony reading WhatsApp's blog posts on this issue. They say this new law would mean companies would be collecting more information about their users at a time when people want companies to have less information about them. But WhatsApp is owned by Facebook, whose very existence is predicated on amassing as much data on their users as possible. And didn't WhatsApp just recently change their terms of service, upping the mandatory level of data they share with Facebook and telling everyone who didn't like it to just stop using the app? Hmm. Part of me wants to be charitable and assume WhatsApp is fighting this fight based on principle. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. Make sure to visit today's sponsor, the SumSub YouTube channel. They make really highly produced videos, which are definitely worth a watch. If you want to see more of this kind of video, make sure to let me know in those comments and turn on those sub notifications so you don't miss any hacking news. For behind the scenes footage, do follow me on the Instagrams. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.